All right, guys, I wanted to do, I've done this before a couple of years ago, but I wanted to do a complete breakdown of the Boss Gen 2 gun to kind of show you how this whole thing comes apart. So I'll try to make this as quick as I can and hopefully point out some things um, that you should know. So anyways, this uh, first step after you've taken it off of the whip, of course, this is something I like my guys to do every morning is to pop these check valve screens out and clean them out with something uh, I mean some people use carburetor cleaner or something just something like aerosol to spray it out and but once you do make sure that you keep it separated I like to tell them do it one at a time because these are not marked A and B so you just have to pull it out clean it out and set it off to the side and uh, but it's pretty simple how this thing is put together it's just just a screw here that holds a spring and a little BB in here I'll show you that little BB drops down inside here and that spring pushes on it to try to help keep the uh, fluid from only being able to go one direction. That's why it's a check valve, of course, but uh, I did want to kind of show you how that came apart. But to clean this screen every morning, grease them O-rings before you put it back in. And remember, do one, at a, one side at a time. If there's chemical in the gun, you don't want to get, and of course wear gloves. I'm, this is just oil here, so I'm not too worried about it, but if... Uh, if you will, please wear gloves and, and do one side, change your gloves, and then do the other because you don't want to get any residue of A over on the, on the B side. So that's, that's how we normally do that. I'm just going to kind of uh, pop this other side up. And they're just stuck in there with, you know, the, the only thing that holds them down is the, is the um, uh, whip manifold is what's holding them in place. Down inside there, after the fluid goes through there, you, you can see the little holes in the bottom of these uh, chambers, uh, these parts here, little hole right in, right there. That's where the fluid goes next, and it goes to your side seals. So that's the next place that the fluid actually travels. So if your screens are clogged, of course it can't get here very well, and that's one of the number one things that causes crossovers, probably, is people not checking their screens often and it getting, getting clogged up. But these are threaded in. I do like that about these guns. They're threaded in and they have a couple O-rings and this is your side seal right here and this is your side seal housing, the metal part. But they, they have this side seal tip here and it simply just pops out. And if you do remove it, be gentle. I'm using a pair of pliers, but I'm being very gentle and just not grip, grabbing it very hard. But it, it's simple little piece with an O-ring on it. And uh, inside the housing is a little spring and you have two O-rings. They are two different sizes. Where my fingers are is called the outer side seal housing O-ring. And right here, towards the inside of the gun, is the inner side seal housing O-ring. And when you're cleaning this stuff out, you've got to, if you have a crossover and you have a bunch of stuff in there, you have to really take your time to clean this out really good. And there's a little ledge right in here a lot of people miss. You want to make sure you get that all cleaned as well. And when you're done, grease everything back up and just pop this back in here and make sure that it has spring to it like this and that it sticks up like that. If, it's, if you can press down and it stays down, you have a problem with your spring. So make sure that it's, that it's sticking up all the way when you do clean these. That's the A side. Let me go ahead and take the B side out. Same thing on it, no sense in me really taking it apart, but that's the B side. So your fluid, when it comes through that hole in the bottom of this part, it goes right between these two O-rings, fills that inside of that up, and it comes out the tip here. Just so you know where, where the fluid is going. And to remove, oh, I skipped the step. <laughs> you have to remove your air cap first. And I, I don't, this is just to kind of keep this nozzle in place and also keeps the air from escaping around. You want the air to only come out your tip so it has an O-ring on it, but that's your air cap. This is your spray nozzle. Some people call it, you know, the tip that goes, it's, it's an insert that goes into the mixing chamber, which I like about these guns because this is only a $30 piece. If you wear this out, you can just get another $30 piece and a lot of times not have to replace the whole mixing chamber. But if it was a gray coke gun, you would have to buy the whole mixing chamber, $150. So after you pull the air cap and 
and the nozzle out. You can just simply back these two bolts out right here. And that will remove the fluid block and expose your mixing chamber right there. This is the most most people will have to go to in this gun is getting to this particular spot. And if you ever are to clean this mixing chamber, you can actually leave it on there. You see the two small holes, you can actually see through it. But you can clean those two small holes with the drill bit they provide and clean down the barrel of it. And then I like to take a WD-40 or something with the straw and stick it right in the center of that and spray to, and make sure I got flow coming out both of these small holes at the same time same pressure if you see it just a little bit out on one side then you know you still got some trash in there so just that's one good way to test if you got it completely clean and of course you got to make sure that the side of these mixing chambers look perfect and not scratched up or anything like that so that's that's the thing to watch about that but inside this fluid block where every all the other stuff uh, fits you need to make sure everything gets perfectly clean but be gentle. Please don't use cordless drills and stuff like that to clean these. Go do it by hand. Get little brushes and stuff to clean it out. And, and you can use a screwdriver to kind of get the big stuff, but be careful not to gouge it because this is steel and this is aluminum. And this will win every time. If you get too rough and start jabbing at it, you'll leave grooves and stuff in there that'll make your O-rings uh, give them a hard time sealing off. But you just have to make sure everything is perfectly clean like you see in this gun before you put it back together or otherwise you risk making another crossover right off the bat because an o-ring can't seal or something so just wanted to make sure that was a, a good point but that's how you break down the fluid block and i've showed you how the side seals come out and everything and that's what uh, uh, you have to do if you ever get a crossover inside your fluid section so i'm going to do another video and talk about the air section of the gun